Hey guys, on today's episode, we will be modeling various types of graphs and increasing in our daily activities. Behind us, you see that there's a staircase. Well, that is actually can be a linear function. If you pay close attention, you might be asking, how can this be a linear function? All I see in front of me is a staircase and nothing else. Wow. If you use a linear function, y equals mx plus b, m being the slope, which at the moment we use a positive slope. That is what we're trying to calculate. The shoes will represent our starting point and our ending point to give us a visual of where we start and where we end. So right now, since we're at the bottom of the stairs, our b will be zero. You might be asking, how come we're at zero? Well, at the moment we're at the origin, and the origin for this linear function is the bottom of the stairs. By origin, we mean the starting point of this function, which at the starting point, it is zero feet and zero inches. We calculated the slope of the shoes as they make their way up the stairs in a positive slope. We had to do some commutations, and our measuring tool is broken. So don't go off of its numbers as it will not be accurate. But if we use the tool as itself by inches, we can see that the rise of this function is seven inches and the run of the function is 10 inches. So if we take that point, we have a rise of seven inches and we have a run of 10 inches for every step. And if we have seven steps, we can calculate the overall slope of this equation. So now that we have found our m and our b in our linear function, we have a linear equation, which is y equals 7 over 10x plus 0. And it's not so good. Well, hey guys. Well, we're continuing off on modeling our daily activities. So today it's a candle. So you might be thinking, what does a candle have to do with it? We don't use math when we light a candle. Well, actually we do. We actually do a cosine function every time we light a candle. We start at our max. We cross. We cross. We hit our minimum. We cross. Hit our maximum when we exit. The function we'll be using to solve this cosine function is the cosine function, which is y equals cosine x. There are very missing variables. We have to find if there's an a, a b, a c, and a d. So we'll start off with our vertical shift at the moment, which is d. Our measuring tool is broken also, so we won't be going by the numbers. We're just going by inches, which is the section between each number. So if we see, we have four inches of a vertical shift, which is at the six or the brim of the candle, the one I am moving right here. So now that we have our D, our vertical shift, we can write it down, four. So now we solved one of the steps. Time to see if we have still have an A, a B, and a C. Now it's time to find our B. We have to measure from one side of the candle to the other to find our period length, which is B. As we see, the section length across the candle is 2.5 inches, which will be our B. Let's write that there. So for B, which is 2.5, we have to convert it into a fraction, which equals then 5 over 2. Now that we have solved our B, we have to still find if there's a C and an A. Well, there's no necessary to check if there's a C, because there is no phase shift in this candle. So we can take that out, we can take that out. Now all that's left is to check the A or the amplitude. So to find the A, we have to measure the height of the match where it is my hand. So 
we have to take out our hefty ruler. As we see, it is on eight inches high. So now we have to find the solution between here, the midpoint, and the minimum. Okay, now time to calculate our amplitude. If our starting was four, as we see here, it is four. We have to subtract this by eight, which comes out to be four inches, right? Well, between that, we have to divide that by two, which is the amplitude between the max cross and the minimum, which would come out to be two for the amplitude. So now that we have found our amplitude, which is two, we can build our equation for cosine. So now that we have everything together, our cosine equation is y equals two cosine five pi over two x plus four. The reason that we have pi is that we're finding measurements. As we said before, two over five over two pi is five over two inches, which is the length. That's why we need the pi as when we do our period, this will cancel out the pi from two over b. Hey guys, so I just finished my can of Fonta Orange and now I'm gonna go recycle it in my garage. So every day that once I'm done with my sodas, I always come and I recycle it and I drop it in a recycling bin, right? Well, that's actually a math equation that if you didn't know, that is a quadratic formula. So every day that once I come recycle, what I'm doing is math. Well, I can find math in what I'm doing in my daily task of throwing away my soda and recycling it. Well, the formula I'd have to use though would be h equals negative 16 t squared plus h zero. So you're probably thinking, what is h zero? Well, h zero is actually the height at which you drop the object, right? So for me is when I have my arm fully extended and I drop it into the canister. So all I would have to do is measure the height of my arm with a can once I drop it. I would achieve from putting in this formula and H0 would be the time at which I drop the can and it hits the floor. I always wonder, hey, how long does it take one second? Does it take two seconds? Well, once I measure that out, we can find out. So as we see, the can is at a height of 27 inches from the floor. Well, now we know the initial height. Now, let's drop it. So now that we have solved for each zero, we have the initial height, which is 27 inches. Now we just have our quadratic equation and we can solve for how long it takes for the can to drop. Oh, hey guys. So my mom just bought some popcorn and I wanted to heat it up. But the thing is, I was thinking, hey, I think this is a math formula. And then it hit me, hey, it's the exponential formula but the one for decay reason being is once i put in the microwave all the water all the stuff in here it's going to evaporate so i was thinking how can i calculate this uh, how much uh, grams do i lose from unpopped to pop popcorn so the exponential formula for decay is y equals a parentheses one minus r t well a stands for the initial amount. So the initial amount for popcorn is around 69 grams. And then it says it should take around two minutes, which is T. T is two minutes. See so over here, it says one and a half to two and a half minutes. So I went for the one in the middle, which would be two minutes. And then the rate, which is R, is 0 0.6 and that is the exponential formula for decay now we can find out how much i lose when i pop my unpopped popcorn in weight oh hi guys so i just finished my popcorn and i was washing my dishes and then it hit me i was like i'm still thinking about all this math right because i'm seeing it everywhere well while i was washing the dishes because i turned them up I was like, wait, 
I know this repetition. I know I know of something. So then it hit me. It's the sine formula. So the sine formula is y equals sine. So what caught attention while watching this was the motion, right? The going like this, like that, like this, like that, like this, like that, right? Well, the thing I was thinking about was like, wait, so I'm starting my origin, um, hitting my max, I'm crossing, then I'm going to my minimum, I cross, go to my max, cross, min, cross, max, right? So it was repetition, repetition, so I was like thinking, wait, I know this is wrong, and I two click together, so I'm seeing math everywhere, even washing my dishes. Now that I know it's the sign formula, I have to still find the A, which is the amplitude. I have to find the B, which is the period. C, if there's a phase shift. D, which is the vertical shift. So right off the bat, I know that I'm not going to have a vertical shift because I'm just washing dishes, right? There's no movement to it. There's, I'm not starting up. I'm not starting down. And then I know that there's not going to be no phase shift because the dish is going to stay where the dish is at because I'm going off of the sponge. So that's out. So all I need to find now is my amplitude and I need to find my period. Which now is that I'm plate. measuring out my plate, my dimensions come out to be eight inches long for my plate. So for my amplitude, now that I know the total length of my plate is gonna be eight inches, I'm gonna divide that in half. So it's gonna be four, which is gonna hit my max, and then I'm gonna cross and I'm another four to hit my minimum. So now for my amplitude, I can put four, which are going to be four inches. Now it's time to find my B. So now that I measured out my plate, I know that the total width of my plate is 10 inches. So now I have my B. So now that I found my B, I have to put it over two and I have to add. Now we have our sine equation for our plate. So our equation is Y equals four sine to pi over 10. I hope you can see how there are graphs and equations in our daily activities, just how I did today. And thank you for tuning in, Mr. Hodge.